Do you ever feel stuck in a rut? Getting stuck in a rut is really a problem if you're trying to solve a problem. So let's talk about that getting stuck in a rut. Companies hate it when their employees get stuck in ruts, in problem solving ruts, because we have this tendency, it's called a mindset. We have a tendency to try to solve a problem in pretty much the same way that we've solved that problem before. You may have heard the phrase, because we've always done it that way. But just because a particular approach to a problem worked in the past, doesn't mean that that approach or solution is the most efficient problem. Just settling in on what happened to work today is not the best way to become an efficient problem solver. So companies are allergic to the phrase because we've always done it that way. It's a mental set, a tendency to approach a problem in the same old way that you've always approached it. Students, it's really important that you pay attention to this nine dot problem, because if you're applying to a cutting edge company, it's entirely possible that you will see the nine dot problem at an interview. So you gotta know how to sol solve it because solving the nine dot problem requires you to think outside the box. So what is a nine dot problem? Well, here you see it, there's nine dots. Really easy task. You're supposed to connect all of those dots by drawing four straight lines. That's it. And you can't pick up your pencil and move it someplace else. So you draw four lines continuously and you have to connect all the dots. Now, when people do that, they typically come up with solutions like this, where the lines are drawn from point to point and there's just no way to connect all the dots if that's your approach. So what you have to do when you get stuck in a problem like that is you have to think, huh, what am I assuming? How am I limiting myself? Or what assumptions am I making that aren't appropriate here that I don't need to make? Now, I don't know if you grew up um, with coloring books or drawing books where you, you draw figures by connecting the dots. If so, that's probably what's preventing you from solving this problem because there's nothing in the problem that says that you can't draw outside of the box. There's when you draw, you know, you're a kid and you're drawing by following the points, you have to, you know, stop and change direction at each point. But you don't have to do that here. You just assume people assume that that's what you have to do. So the actual solution to the nine dot problem, is the following. You have to draw the line outside of the box as shown here. And if you do that, you can easily, in a number of different ways, connect all nine dots with four continuous lines. Actually, I'll give you another solution that I've never seen in a book. One of my study students came up with it, and I think it's just brilliant. He got a really thick pen, a pen that was as thick as the three dots are wide, and he just drew a really thick line across the nine dots. I think that's brilliant. And shows, you know, um, that he wasn't in a metal set, right? He wasn't stuck thinking about things in a particular way. He could have a new and creative solution to the problem. So when we get stuck thinking about objects as having only one function, that's called fixation or functional fixedness functional fixedness. When you can't solve a problem because you feel like you don't have the tool that you need to solve the problem, but you actually do, you just don't recognize it. So for example, sometimes if a, a flathead screw is loose and you think, oh, you know, I'd really love to screw that screw in so nobody trips over it, but I don't have a screwdriver. Well, if it's a big screw, you can use a dime. Uh, I saw a great picture once of somebody blowing leaves by taking an indoor fan and an extension cord and use, using that to blow leaves. Now, nobody thinks of an indoor fan as a leaf blower. Nobody thinks of a dime as a screwdriver, but they function that way. So functional fixedness is when you don't have those realizations, when you think of objects as having only their originally intended function. And something called the candle problem is a great example of functional fixedness. Very simple problem. You're standing there in a room waiting for the experimenter. The experimenter walks in with those items, a box of matches, 
a candle or two and some tacks, maybe a hammer. And the experimenter says, okay, I want you to create um, a candle holder, attach it to the wall and light the candle in a way that doesn't burn down the wall. Now, what people typically do when they're given this task is to hold the candle against the wall and to try to push the tacks, attach the candle to the wall by pushing the tacks or the nails into the wall. It doesn't work. Um, the, the tacks are never long enough. And even if you could get it to work, once you light the candle, you're gonna burn the wall down. So that's not a solution. The solution is to think about the items that you were given in a new way. Now, how do we know this? Well. If you give the items in the way I originally presented, the matches are in the box, about 45% of people can solve the problem. But you could use something really simple. Open the box of matches, put the box matches on the table and present them separately from the box. Then that sort of loosens up people's minds and they can think about the box, not as a container, but as a platform because the solution Two, the candle problem is to use the container as a platform to attach the container or platform to the wall and the candle to the platform and then you can light it no problem. But you have to overcome your functional fixedness, right? You have to think about the box that's holding the matches, not as a container, but as a platform. Come back and we're gonna try a segment in which we apply problem solving to real world issues that students have to figure out every day. Like, who do you believe and why? I promise you'll love it or hate it. You'll find it interesting for sure.